Okay, everybody, so day six. Before I start doing anything, I always, you need to turn off the main water because you have no idea what's gonna happen when you start demoing a bathroom. So in this case, it just happened to be right there, uh, mobile home. So next thing, just a different shot there. It's kind of cloudy today, which is good. Um, so definitely gonna do that before start any type of demo work with water otherwise you just have a big old mess on your hands um so pretty simple to do um if you don't know where you're at the mobile park all you have to do is ask most of the maintenance guys know exactly where to go to turn off the water some people have water meters some people don't uh, this community actually does so today uh, here's here's what's taken out so the bathtub, shower, uh, I actually had to cut this out to get it out. So when they manufacture these things, they probably bring in the tubs, the showers, assemblies before they put up the walls and they go from it from, from that perspective and then build the walls and then uh, seat it in there. So I, I, the, the toilet slipped out of my hand when I carried it and it kind of broke and fell and made a mess. So that's, that, that wasn't intentional, it just, uh, what happened with it so this is just a, a scrap the stuff that was taken out so this took all day um i know it doesn't look like a lot of work but it was so kind of i opened up the door so shannon thanks for the 30 the ada is 32 inches i've got this at 31 inches um i'll see what i can do um to make it 32 i, I have to probably go left but um, I don't know if I can go much farther than what I got. So 31, it was at 24. So it's basically seven inches wider than it was when I started. Um, yep, Randy, you're gonna love that, man. It's just like poke a freaking hole and put it up there. And uh, this one is actually done kind of right. Well, not really, it doesn't even have the piece of plastic in there. So this is how you wire it. You just wire it, cut a big old nasty hole, and, and just do it. Pretty, pretty freaking, I don't like how that was done, so Randy can probably teach me how, or he can say, yeah, that's, that's how we do it. Um, if that's what Randy says, then I'll go with what he says. Um, so, kind of the things, um, Shannon brought up asbestos. I looked this up, and they stopped making asbestos in 1980 and, and earlier, so, well, later. So this is a 1985 model um, home, so I think we're okay, but still I'm gonna be a little bit safe, just be on the safe side. So something I wore almost all day long, and these are very hard to find, um, is these masks. These, you used to be able to pick these up. Um, I wish our current, I hope our new president puts a little bit more of a mandate because there's con I'm just was thinking how many contractors should be having that, not because of the, the, the virus, but just to protect themselves and how many more health cases are we gonna deal with with cancer or lung disease or whatever. Because that's something to think about. So yeah, it's uncomfortable, it's hot, it's miserable at times, um, but uh, it sure does help the lungs later on. I mean, I still got grit in my mouth and stuff. So I can't wait to take a shower. So this is what I did. And you notice this is the door, you know, so I'm gonna definitely beef the door sections up. They were just like this before I ripped it out. So it's nothing different there. Um, this is an interesting story. Um, you know, most home builders will actually put a two by four right here they'll actually attach it and they'll actually put the header up and attach the header. Well, they didn't do any of that. This is really crappy, whoever did this this crap. Um, what they did was they used the shower to hold all this assembly up. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing a demo. Obviously I had the valves off otherwise, and this is why you turn them off. Here's a good example why you turn off water. Um, sometimes these things will even leak uh, when when uh, you, you do it, and in this case they didn't, but I do have a leaker over here. So the toilet is leaking even with a shutoff valve, even with it off. So I'm gonna have to get a pair of needle nose uh, tomorrow, clamp that off, a vice grip needle nose, and that should prevent that. And then 
uh, have Gmon probably go to the mobile home depot and get a new valve so we can I can replace that later. So um, this this is crap work, and, and and I guess this is what they did in the 80s, and quite frankly, that's just shitty. So um, here's here's what we I've got to deal with. So not I mean you know. This is a metal over metal, so at one time I believe it was probably leaking. It felt, it smells pretty must, it smelt musty at the beginning of the day. It smells a lot better. I'll treat all this. Uh, this will be all painted before I actually put together. I've ripped out all the insulation. I mean, it's like, nothing was moldy. Um, there's probably just the mold on the edges, you know, that's typical. Not a lot of heavy mold, but still. I'm going to beef this all up, so tomorrow when I show this, I'm going to actually show this whole section in here beefed up because I'm going to be putting tile in here and those little 2x2s. Two and in some cases, we, I have a 4x4 four four in there. You can see how they notch that. Um, and I'll put, I've got treated wood I'm actually going to put in here. So um, that's that's another thing I'm do. So I'm beefing this entire pro, entire system up in here and also in here. And we build it to where I put the header in correctly. Um, just typical typical good building standards. I mean, it's common sense. I'm not I'm not a contractor by trade, but uh, I've watched enough videos on YouTube. And I, I suggest watching this. Anybody can do this. Honestly, all you have to do is be patient and just and one willing to fail and learn um the the thing that i found probably interesting was the amount of staples i had to deal with <clears throat> so i had two choices I either could beat in the staples or i could pull them out i chose to actually pull them out um i did an experiment i hit them in on a, an area that wasn't and i timed myself and then i timed myself pulling them out guess what about the same time and I don't have to worry about them seeping back through, uh, punching through, anything like that. They're cleaner. And really when you're doing tile work, you really, really want to make sure these walls are as straight as you can get them. Tomorrow I'm going to probably have to sand a little bit of stuff off. Um, you know, that, that junk that you see there, it's, it's glue actually. Um, so I'll, I'll probably need to sand it just slightly to make it smooth. So when I put on the hardy board, it goes on smooth. Here's an interesting thing. This is the cutout. Yep, that's the drain, and that's the cutout. That is insane. So I'm going to fix that. That, that to me, is just, that's, that's not even an excuse, man. So that's going to be fixed for sure. Um, I just need to think about it for a little bit, how I'm going to do that correctly. I'm not going to dare do something. I'm not going to dare close that up like that. That is a big joke is what that is. Um, okay, here. So... I found the answer to the, the the windows not opening. In this case, and all these all these window ledges are made out of uh, particle board, the old particle board. Um, I guess a handyman is 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 my thoughts here. The handyman uh, probably got told, "Hey, I need you to fix this ledger." Well, when he fixed the ledger, he just all he did was put another ledger on top of it, and then it, it actually put a pressure against the window and so you couldn't have the window it would go up or down um he didn't fix it and this is the kind of stuff i i would suspect that you know he paid probably the poor person paid exactly what it would have done to do it right um all i'm gonna do is i ripped out the two by four i gotta rip out more of it i gotta be careful so i don't break the frame or bend the frame um and then i'm gonna go in and, and do that right and then that, that window should work from now on. Um, and we'll actually put more than likely uh, stone on the ledger here. So, because what happens is these mobile homes do condensate, especially around the windows, they're gonna condensate. Um, I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna seal this with foam. So you can see it's coming through and that's probably more than likely just because of condensation. It's not probably water leaks. It doesn't certainly look like water leaks, when you look below, it, it has well, the appearance, and I believe the reason it, it was doing it was it was actually coming here condensating and coming down on the condensation. I don't believe it's a, I, I, it doesn't look like it's a long-term leak. Um, there's, it, it, yeah, the wood's discolored, but it's not really rotten. Um, you know, and I've read, I've read up and I watched enough videos 
this insulation's okay. It's it's black, yes, but what they what happens is over a course of a period of time, the HVAC system pulls in air from all wherever the air can be found. And all that is is just dirty. It's, it's not moldy um, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I've, I've seen enough videos. People will explain it, but the explanation, and it's a decent explanation, is uh, there's air gaps. Those air gaps come through. They seep. They bring in dirty air because it's pulling it in from the system, from the HV system. Um, up above, I try to save as much of the insulation as I could. I really don't want to deal with this, but I'm gonna have to deal with it tomorrow. So I'm gonna have to get those staples out. I'm gonna have to do what I need to do, and I'm probably gonna find out that I'm gonna have to get all. I'm gonna probably get really nasty tomorrow. So I got nasty just pulling that out. They don't know, so I'm actually pulled out all this. I've got to get, there's some work I'm going to have to do on the ceiling. I'll show what I'm going to do with that. Um, I am not going to do what some of the, the, the stuff I've seen here. I mean, this this board here, right here, if you look at the gap, you see the pot, you see the particle, the, the, the wall board. They just put a piece in and, and screw it. That's, that's, that's what you call mobile home building, I guess. So I'm going to fix that as well. I did find, this is kind of cool. So I guess if you're in a big mobile home community uh, neighborhood, and there's a lot in this neighborhood, well, there's a lot in this part of the, the country, Home Depots will actually have uh, two by threes. Um, this is really, this is really two and a half, but they're really considered two by threes, just like a two by four. Two by four is two and three and a half. So, um, I'm going to go in and put just untreated wood in here, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I got some Thompson water seal and I'm going to seal everything with Thompson water seal, but what's going in the shower area is going to be treated wood. I'm going to leave these structures where they're at. I am not going to dare touch those. I'm just going to add more wood in there. Um, there's, there's no reason to pull those out. I'll Thompson water seal those. Um, there shouldn't be any water coming through ever, but you know, it's just, you know, what's 19 bucks? 19 bucks is nothing. So even if you're going to think about doing this as an investment or you're thinking about doing it as a flip or you're thinking about doing it for yourself, do it for your, do it like you would do it yourself. Even if you were to flip it, you spend a little bit of money and do it. If you're doing a rental, why wouldn't you do it right to begin with? So that's another question you'd ask. You know, you do it right, and then you, have to, you don't have to come back and do it again. Um, and do it again in two years. So, um, you know, this, it does take longer to do this, but I think, um, you know, it's getting there. And I can, another thing I kind of do is, uh, from periodically, I take the sprayer and there's so much dust in here and I just like spray, spray to keep the dust down. Um, just, you know, it, it does help. It, it does make it a little bit sloppy in here and, and I, I, I can't wait to take a shower, but, um, that's what I've been able to do today, guys. Um, hopefully you find this kind of interesting. Uh, I really hope that you learn something out of this. Uh, one thing I, I'd like to pass on is, you know, you, when you're pulling these staples out or you're doing this kind of work, you choose to do one or two things. You can do this with your hands or you can do this with gloves. You can tell the gloves are kind of wore out. So these are, these are pretty high quality gloves. Um, I was not going to dare use my hands and touch that. So what I did was I used these dikes right here. These are good old electrician dikes. Randy can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and what I would do is I would take the dike part of it, clamp it, and then ledge it out. Um, I did that over and over. I'm going to have to do all the top ones up there, which I have not done, and I'm going to have to do the ceiling. But you can tell they're really staple happy. There's lots of staples. Staple, staple, staple. I got to do the bottom, which I have not done yet, um, but I will do that. So what's going to go down is this, this linoleum's going to stay. I'm not going to dare touch it. Um, I don't care if it's not asbestos. I don't really care. I don't feel like spending all the time pulling this stuff up. Um, I think it's easy enough to just put hardy board down and you're done with it. Um, I'll have to get some new, some pieces of tile and, and, and put in tile so it levels out correctly, but nothing like that. Um, you'll see what else. So another thing is you're going to have, what I do is I take the dike and I, I do this 
you don't want to really do it with your gloves because they can some catch you, cut your glove or whatever the case is. Just do this and then do it again and again. Uh, and you'll find that you'll find more in staples. I mean, maybe I'm blind and I can't see them, but that's what I was doing. And um, I'm sure I'll go through it one more time before I put the hardy board on, the cement board, and do it. One thing I did learn today, I was watching a video and the interesting thing is this guy said, do not use paperback products uh, with um, with tile. And in Santa Monica, and they were Santa Monica, it really depends on where you're at. I'm sure in Santa Monica, they have earthquakes and from time to time, they have a lot of shifting. I would not do paperback and tile in the mobile home. And the reason being is it does shift. It's not gonna be like your typical home. You know, if you're in a clay environment, that's another place you're going to probably have a lot of shifting. Sand, not so much, but it can shift. But in this case, I'm definitely going to use um, hardy back. I'm going to then seal it with uh, reds or something or some aqua. Um, so it's a sealer and uh, Randy's going to help me do that as well. So I'm sorry this is getting long, but I mean, uh, six, you know, so you guys have a great day and you guys take care. Bye.